What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and this video is brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com because I signed myself. Now, this video right here, the, the snippet that you have to see is talking about diversity. It's a it's a subject, right, that we've talked about a lot on this channel. But there was an interview that I did with TJ Chapman, B.O.B.'s manager, and he specifically went into what B.O.B. goes through as a truly diverse artist. And I'll wait till the end before I get into some stuff. That's, that's perfect because I would like to, I mean, you know, you're the perfect, perfect person to ask because for me, you know, he's such a unique artist, right? And, like, he, he's very diverse and so many artists want to be diverse like so many people say they want to be diverse and they not they aren't diverse for real but he is like truly diverse and i remember like you know all right, the cloud nines and things like that and and then you know the uh the, it was a track that was that, that would be on the radio it was everywhere and then i'll be in the sky exactly and those tracks were like some of them were a little bit smoker some of them were a little bit more atlanta uh decatur a little bit hood then he'll have the ones that are more poppy or andre 3000-esque but right. by the, when he blew up with the nothing on you, right, that was straight pop. And what I saw, because I was just, you know. But, but it wasn't, though. Well, if, I, if, 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 if it wasn't Bruno Vo Voice on there, it could have been Urban. And it went number one Urban. True. But, like. So it's just a universal sound. But go ahead. But from, a, like, a, 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 a kid's perspective, and I'm just reading YouTube comments and stuff like that right, right, right. at the time. Like, and then you had the airplanes and stuff like that. Like that, that introduced them to such a pop uh, world. And then what I started to see, just watching as more music got released from the comments perspective, I would see he might do something back more on the, you know, Atlanta hood or type side sometimes. And then the pop fans will be calling him a sellout. And then I'll see, you know, and then the, yeah. the you know, and then when he's doing the the pop stuff, the hood people are looking at him one way. Like, well, what is that like from the inside? <sighs> Dog on, on some real shit right there. It's like, it's like as an artist, you work all your life to become a, a superstar. That's what you want. That's what you're working for. Um, Bob come from the hood. You know what I'm saying? He don't come from no suburban night place or fam. You know, he come, he come, he come from Decatur. He come, and and that's what he how he grew up. Um, it just so happened that he makes worldly music. Yeah. And, and so when he got on, he just made universal song. He, he, he never wanted to be a pop guy. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and really that don't, it, it don't even sit well, uh, with him. You know, a lot of people always wonder why, like, yo, man, you, you, you know, that, that's what every rapper aspires to be. But, you know, he 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 wanted to be embraced by his his, his people, and he just yeah. he just made really big music, and you know it it ended up becoming it's a gift and a curse, mm -hmm. having all these different types of fans and being able to make all different kind of records, um, and having all this success. The fan base is so huge and so diverse. Um, between the age groups to the cultures to to everything, um, it's almost impossible for him to make something nowadays that's gonna go well with everybody. Mm. And and so then it it, it 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 you know becomes something that you have to deal with, and and people on the outside really don't really don't get it, mm. and they don't understand. And and when you the artist, you just want to make records. Yeah. Never, never tried to, you know what I'm saying? Never tried to do it. The only, the only poppy record that was on the album that, that it was like, okay, damn, this, this thing is, 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 is pop, too pop, uh, was Magic. You know, uh, uh, him with Rivers Cuomo. You know, it went double platinum. Uh, it might be triple now, but, um, you know, that was the pop record. Yeah. Um, we did Airplanes on BT with Keisha Cole singing it. You know what I'm saying? And so if you had Keisha on there over Haley, now that song be, has an urban feel. Mm. They were universal records of what they weren't. Pop. 
it, 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 it was what well, what was put on them that made them it, it took them that route. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, so but he never tried to do that and, and so you know, so it's been a gift and a curse and, and, and to be honest, it's something that you know, that he that he that he deals with. Like and it's and it's crazy. It's crazy to, from a management standpoint to to know no matter what he does and no matter how good it is, it it, it don't matter. There's gonna be a segment of people that's gonna hate and bash. You know, and, and it's just like wow, boy, that shit that shit's hard. It's weird. That's why I was asking because I was so deep into it, and I would literally, I, I, I because. Of oh, hold on. Before you say it, before you hold on, before you say that, let me say this because I just have for an artist that gets confusing. You okay. know what I'm saying? Okay, so you're making this sound, and then your fans start talking about, hold up, now nah, you selling out, and this and that and that, and, you, and this ain't what you're trying to be. So now you're trying to make something to please them, but when you do that. You know, then you got these people over here now bashing you, and it's just like, okay, should it, damn if I do, damn if I don't. That's exactly what I was actually about to say. I'll see. But go ahead, no, okay, I know I interrupted. That, that was it. No, that was, oh. it. I was like, it. It was confusing me because I have a diverse like type of music that I, I I like because of just how I grew up. There would be so many different types um, for my dad, and I, so I could enjoy both sides. And I, and then knowing the journey of where he came from and all that stuff, so I would be looking at comments. I'm like, bro, what do you mean, bro? What do you mean? But it, it was, it's. I always imagine that was a wild situation. And he came out with no drama, trying to make a point. Like you know what I mean? Like there was so many. But yeah, I always wonder like how like if it yeah what that was. So that's why when I hear artists talk about being diverse, especially when it's truly diverse. Like some people are stylistically diverse. You can do a lot, but you're still in this pocket. Like Tory Lane, right? right? He's right. like he might. He can write and do anything, but it's stuff that he might write for people and do that stuff that's way outside the pocket. But as far as his music, he keeps it pretty much in a pocket, you know, and it has similar or overlapping fan base. But like to just do it how Bobby did it, and I, like he never came out with that rock album that I remember he was talking about. At least I didn't catch it. And, and, and he still got it. He got all that music and he got he got a whole bunch of projects. That's, yeah. And all he does is record. So, so I, I I imagine he makes so. music a lot. I just want to know for like for yeah for an artist, I definitely wanted to get your opinion and your insight, which you shared a lot because I think artists don't know what they're what it actually looks like. We always they hear the message of organic so much, and then they hear the message of it doesn't matter. Just make what you want, and you can be diverse. And consumers are not as trained for diverse music as you really think. Like they just aren't. <laughs> they are and not, not, and not uh, they are receptive either yeah all right so that's a snippet and i definitely have some things that i want to say but before i get into that just want to remind you that if you haven't seen the whole interview you can check out the entire interview by just google searching i mean youtube searching tj chapman brand man brand man sean and that'll pop up because i don't know if i'll remember to put the link in the description below but the things to actually keep in mind about this is yeah, we have a lot of artists that say they're diverse, right? But really, diversity is, is kind of kept within, within a box, right? And there's still the same fans that you're speaking to. You're really just speaking to the same fans from a different direction. But when we get into diversity, diversity, then you're talking about types of music and types of sounds where one fan base might hear it, but then you have a completely different side of your fan base that does not even relate to it at all. Right. And that's when we start to find these troubles. When you're a truly diverse artist, when you're a, a, a widely diverse artist, you have this conflict of interest that we talked about in this interview snippet. Right. And that's when you find a lot of trouble. That's what I'm trying to get a lot of people to avoid when they're starting off. Because if you put out some music and on one end, your fans are loving it. But then on the other end, you have these other fans that literally not just say, mm, that's not the song for me, but he's selling out for creating this type of song. And then I drop another song. And now finally this fan base side is completely okay with it. And they're back in love with me again. But now this other side of my fan base is like, yo, bro, we, we, we hate you or we're, you're a sellout from their perspective. You're always going to be in this conflict. And it's just a hard thing to work with. But even greater than that, for an artist aspiring to blow up, it's just a hard thing to ever create a foundation to blow up off of. Again, a lot of these artists that you see that are diverse, quote unquote, right? A lot of air quotes, they blew off off of one song or one sound, 
right? And then they found other ways to get their fans to like them. Either it's the personality that they had that became larger than life, right? Um, or it's something like, let's say they create songs that have different sounds, but that those same fans like it. They like the content of it. It's more about the content than the sonics itself. There, there's so many ways to get around that stuff, but the more you focus on trying to be completely diverse, and maybe you aren't as diverse as you might seem, and that's what I want people to uh, think about as well, because somebody, some people, I honestly feel like, after talking to some artists, they feel like they have to be diverse. They're aspiring to be diverse when they're not capitalizing off of what they already are, right? And, they, and it's really just creating confusion in the music. And that's just the honest guy's truth, where sometimes you aren't super diverse. You aren't really good at a lot of different types of music, but you're killing it in one area and you're not capitalizing on that because it became cool and trendy to be diverse. Everybody wants to be diverse. But in the 90s, it wasn't this huge, cool thing to say, I listen to all types of music. But now you ask people, what do you listen to? And a lot of people say, I listen to a little bit of everything. But then when you go down and looking through their playlists and the things that they actually listen to based on their real behavior, and they, they don't really listen to everything, right? And that's where your fans can throw you off. You see people like giving people big ups, right? And, and praising people for being diverse, but then you actually find out it once you go be diverse, mm, they don't really feel that way, right? And it's not exactly what it seems. So that's just something to keep in mind. There's no better way to see that other than what was in TJ Chapman's interview talking about this real experience of what it's like, this real conflict of what it's like when you have a truly diverse, not just sound, right, but more so even a diverse fan base because your music's so diverse, it actually speaks to different people, not just pleases the same people from a different way and how hard that could be as a career. Other than that, man, as always, this video is brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe.